Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and WandaVision just officially crossed over X-Men to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and no one knows how the hell it happened or what the hell it means. Wanda's brother Pietro shows up inside the Westview Anomaly, played not by the MCU's Aaron Taylor Johnson Quicksilver, whose character died in Avengers Age of Ultron, but by Evan Peters, who played Maximoff, aka the mutant Quicksilver from the previously separate film universe, the Fox X-Men franchise, properties that are now all owned by Disney and therefore under the same IP umbrella as Marvel Studios, The Avengers Movies, and WandaVision. So are we looking at the first official on-screen crossover between the MCU and this X-Men universe of Wolverine, Deadpool, multiple Magnetos, and Professor X's? Is this stunt casting and a meta joke about sitcom recasting designed to fool Wanda Maximoff and to fool us? Or to quote this witch, a bit of both. I'm gonna explain how Quicksilver got here and what his cameo tells us about the MCU's plans to bring the X-Men into the MCU. And this video is brought to you by Privacy. Privacy lets you buy things online using virtual cards, protecting your identity and bank information on the internet. As a treat for my viewers, new customers get $5 to spend on their first purchase when they go to privacy.com slash new rockstars to sign up now. So Quicksilver has had one of the more confusing on-screen histories of the Marvel film characters. In the comics, he's a speedster, mutant brother to Scarlet Witch, both the children of Magneto. In the 90s, Marvel Comics sold the film rights of the X-Men to Fox Studios. And that first 2000 X-Men was actually Kevin Feige's start in this genre. He was an associate producer on the film. But Quicksilver's first appearance in these movies technically was in 2003's X2. He and his sister were listed as Maximoff 2 on a government registry. But then years later, Evan Peters was cast as Quicksilver in 2014's Days of Future Past. A pretty great film that bridges both eras of the X-Men movies. Wolverine goes back in time to the 1970s to prevent a post-apocalyptic future and ends up hanging out with the new X-Men characters. That includes them using Quicksilver to break out Magneto from the Pentagon, giving us this amazing time in a bottle sequence. They do bring up Magneto being his dad, but they don't dwell on it. Now, around this time, Kevin Feige had grown Marvel Studios from an independent studio that would sometimes partner with other studios and co-license characters to a Goliath, now owned by Disney. And this is just in time for Avengers Age of Ultron, in which they hope to feature the Maximoff twins. But then Fox was like, ah, uh, no f way. Quicksilver is now our hottest rookie. So if you want to use him, you cannot make him an Avenger, you cannot mention his Magneto connection, and you cannot once say the word mutant. So Joss Whedon's script kind of had to awkwardly use words like enhanced for the Maximoff twins, and then avoided saying Quicksilver altogether, and then permanently cut off Pietro's chances of ever being an Avenger. God, he didn't see that coming. Meanwhile, Fox kept producing X-Men movies, each set in a later decade. 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Sound familiar? Well, hold that thought. Now, the 80s set X-Men Apocalypse is memorable mostly for another Quicksilver scene. He saved dozens of mutant students from the X-Mansion as it explodes. He moves at insane god-level speeds. He's basically stopping time. It's all set to the Eurythmics Sweet Dreams. Pretty cool. But around this time, the tides were turning. Deadpool really became the dominant moneymaker for Fox. Marvel Studios' cinematic universe was growing more and more interconnected. It became the center of the nerd movie universe. And the last vestiges of the old X-Men brand really came to a close with Logan in 2017, and Fox, seeing the writing on the wall, sold all of its film rights to Disney. But they had already shot this 90s set X-Men Dark Phoenix, so by the time they released it in 2019, everyone was like, is this still happening? Quicksilver is barely in the movie. The movie's not great. Really, you could sense that behind the scenes, the studio was just kind of like waiting for this franchise to die off so that they could, like Sword with Vision, yank apart this corpse and reboot it for bigger and better things. And one of those projects Projects is Evan Peters crossing the streams as Quicksilver here in WandaVision. But by what logic is Marvel Studios introducing the X-Men in the MCU? What does this mean? Well, let us remind ourselves of really the four paths Marvel might be using to reboot the X-Men and see how this Quicksilver cameo fits in with it all. Theory one, the explanation I think most of us are thinking is gonna be the case, Quicksilver came from the multiverse. So Avengers Endgame reset the MCU on kind of an axis of multiple branch timelines, AKA the multiverse. You'll remember Spider-Man Far From Home mentioned this multiverse, but it was then revealed to be Mysterio's lie, yet the multiverse exists. WandaVision could be part of a multiverse 
Universe Saga, a multi-title event. Spider-Man 3 will similarly cross over characters from past alternate universes and team up Peter Parker with multiverse navigator Doctor Strange. And Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness is going to be some kind of multiverse plot based on the title in which Wanda is confirmed to return, most believe as the villain. So what we're looking at with this Westview anomaly, it may be a kind of window to that multiverse. All of its sitcom sets, its props, its costumes, its music, all these aesthetics are being pulled from alternate dimensions that are based on real world pop culture. A Dick Van Dyke reality, a Bewitched reality, a Brady Bunch reality, a Family Ties reality. And among all of these pop culture infinite realities, one of them is the Fox X-Men franchise. Because like the episodes of WandaVision, each of those later X-Men films progressed decade by decade. First Class in the 60s, Days of Future Past in the 70s, Apocalypse in the 80s, Dark Phoenix in the 90s. So at the moment Wanda was missing her brother in this 80s episode, the Anomaly plucked a Quicksilver from another universe where he was alive in the 80s, giving us X-Men Apocalypse era 80s Quicksilver. Now, if this does end up being in the realm of the explanation, anyone from that X-Men franchise is fair game to cross over. Deadpool Ryan Reynolds, who is confirmed to have his next movie set in the MCU, Magneto Ian McKellen or Michael Fassbender, Professor X, Patrick Stewart or James McAvoy. And by the way, this could be the same logic that explains how actors like Jamie Foxx and Alfred Molina are reprising their villains in this new MCU Spider-Man 3. Wanda Maximoff's hex bubble becomes a sort of interdimensional Pandora's box that spills alternate universe heroes and villains all over the MCU. And in that way, Disney just ends up kind of owning everything. And again, thanks to Privacy for sponsoring this video. Privacy is a tool that makes it super easy to manage your financial lives online while keeping all of your information secure. By generating virtual numbers, privacy masks your real bank information so that you never have to worry about giving it out. And it's now easier than ever to share cards with friends and family using privacy's shared cards. Like parents can set up a monthly cap on how much the kids can spend. Businesses can send cards with individual spending limits to employees for company expenses, all with the security of privacy cards. And privacy comes in real handy with recurring payments, like for streaming services. I set up an account with privacy, linked my bank account, and created a card specifically for my monthly Netflix subscription payment. In case I want to set up that subscription just for like two more months, I can set that with my privacy card and then forget about it. Like I don't have to remember to go unsubscribe from the thing I don't want anymore. Privacy will ding you if someone tries to charge the card again or if that charge exceeds the amount that you set for it. Fill out your credit card info in the privacy.com Chrome and Firefox extension and you are one click away from spending smartly and safely. Head to privacy.com slash new rock stars and sign up for an account. New customers will automatically get $5 to spend on your first purchase. Go to privacy.com privacy.com slash new rock stars to sign up now. But another explanation for this mutant crossover that incorporates other elements that keep being brought up in WandaVision is Quicksilver's X-Men timeline bridged with the MCU timeline due to cosmic radiation. WandaVision has made it clear that this Westview anomaly is radiation based, CMBR, cosmic microwave background radiation, which they state dates back to the Big Bang, the same event that Wong explained in Infinity War concentrated elements of the universe into the Infinity Stones. Episode five features Monica planning to build a vehicle that protects from all kinds of radiation so that she can burst through that wall. Radiation including photons and neutrons, which sounds like not just CMBR, but nuclear radiation. Alpha, beta, gamma radiation, the deadlier type of radiation that created the Hulk and radiated from the Infinity Stones to injure Thanos and Banner and fatally Tony Stark. Avengers Endgame also set the rules of the MCU so that it's supposed to be Infinity Stones that cause ruptures to the time stream, creating alternate branch timelines. Captain America lives out his life with Peggy Carter in one of those alternate histories. Recent reports say that Marvel is developing two more films with Chris Evans playing Cap, and all signs point to at least one of them following a post-World War II team-up with Wolverine set in this alternate history where X-Men could exist. So if the X-Men do exist in an alternate timeline, and alternate timelines are branched off in the MCU with Infinity Stones, the Westview anomaly, a hex created in part by Wanda's powers, which were derived from an Infinity Stone, might also represent a convergence between those two worlds. Not necessarily a pop culture free-for-all like the first theory, really just two slightly more plausible realities bridging due to this Infinity Stone radiation. I know, I might have lost you there. So a more straightforward explanation for how radiation could have caused this that doesn't use the word multiverse. <laughs> Infinity Stone radiation transformed certain humans into mutants. So in episode five, the moment Darcy sees Pietro arrive, if you listen closely, a brief
breach alarm is blaring through the sword camp. So at that moment, someone must have been entering or exiting Westview. This speedster we see here could be someone from the outside strong enough to penetrate the Westview border, or at least fast enough to dart through the bouncing particles of the border wall. Again, this guy's god level speed. He could be one of many individuals who were irradiated into mutants around the MCU from one of those four Infinity Stone shockwaves. Because we know in Wanda's case, it wasn't just Infinity Stone radiation. She had a certain genetic predisposition, something that that the MCU might define as the X gene that exists dormant in certain individuals around the world and has now been awakened by the Infinity Stones. And because this guy is a speedster, once he enters Westview, the anomaly's rewriting of reality warps him into someone Wanda would recognize as her late speedster brother. In fact, that could be why he does not respond to the name Pietro. He just kind of tilts his head with an interesting expression. Pietro. radiation mutation could be what WandaVision is hinting at with Monica Rambeau. Her scans showed up as pure light, which could explain how she was able to survive her violent expulsion from Westview, which was something that Wanda was very surprised to see. You're still here. Monica could have awoken from the blip from the moment Tony Stark blasted the universe with the latest shockwave of radiation, and Monica Rambeau's DNA could have been woken up to give her mutant abilities. Now, that would require the MCU to retcon her as a mutant as opposed to just the superhero photon, but I feel like that's an easy switch for them to make. Now, it is pretty clear that Wanda did not cognitively summon Quicksilver. I didn't do that. It could have been her subconscious doing it, or this cameo could have been the doing of the forces outside of Wanda's control within Westview. So that is why I have posed the theory that this Quicksilver is a trick being pulled on Wanda by whatever other sinister entity is lurking in Westview. Mephisto, the Grim Reaper, Nightmare, whomever Agnes is partnering with, maybe Agnes herself, presenting to Wanda a false version of her brother in order to appease her heartbreak after resurrected Vision is no longer doing the trick. Now, if this is true, casting Evan Peters could mean one of two things, that this entity has access to the multiverse and is playing a trick by pulling an alternate universe Quicksilver or reasons that have gone into in other theories. Or casting Evan Peters could just be Marvel's way of signaling to us that this is not the real Pietro while kind of winking to the fans in a meta jokey way about how sitcoms will recast supporting roles with doppelgangers all the time. And that less exciting version of this, Evan Peters would just be, for all intents and purposes, just an actor with an ironic filmography. But if that's all this is, if this is not the official X-Men crossover, what will be Marvel's explanation? Well, we have to acknowledge, folks, the mutants might have always existed in the MCU. Remember, we don't necessarily have to see some cosmic event that births mutants into existence. They might have always been there, just keeping a low profile in the background of MCU history, maybe fighting Thanos' forces from other unseen fronts of the war. Future X-Men titles could show us how Wolverine and Cyclops, the rest of the gang, confronted these crises in their own ways, and if they ever did interact with the Avengers, these are all just scenes that happened on the side and the camera wasn't pointed in that direction. Now, yeah, in this case, Evan Peters as Pietro would have nothing to do with it. And that's why I only bring it up in case his cameo in WandaVision isn't revealed to be part of a bigger X-Men crossover. Because if that is the case, this they always existed explanation is still very much on the table. But I want to hear from you. Which theory makes the most sense to you? And which would have you looking forward the most to the MCU phase four and five? You can actually join this conversation on New Rockstar's official Discord server, which you can join by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash new rock stars get our latest obsession shirt called an unusual couple at our merch store newrockstarsmerch.com you can follow me on instagram at ea Voss, follow new rock stars subscribe to new rock stars on youtube for breakdowns of all your wandavision confusions thanks for watching bye bye <laughs>